Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for spinning that YouTube dial in my direction and joining me as I continue to explore the wide world of pens, both old and new, born and blue, for you. So yes, you see a classic black and gold pen spinning in front of you from one of the big pen manufacturers. Some of you might recognize the pen. And we're going to explore this pen, talk about some of its siblings, talk a little bit about history of the time that it was made, and see how that interesting nib writes. Mr. Sizemore is enjoying his view of the pen in his 4D eyesight. So let's explore this pen and see how it fits into the history of Waterman pens. So you may ask, why do I have this pen? Well, last year I went to visit one of my YouTube viewers who's also into pen collecting. So we decided to bring some pens that we would be willing to trade. So he found one of mine that he liked, and this was one of his that I liked. I wrote with it, it had ink in it, and I said, I like this. And one reason why I was enthralled with it is as you pop off the cap, You'll notice a very interesting nib, different than anything else I've seen before, especially from a waterman. And they engraved on the feed the nib size, and there's also a little dot there on the barrel. Obviously, the pen has not been used much. I found it to be interesting enough to say, let's go, let's trade. But the pen has sat for a while. I really got to get motivated to do videos so now we're motivated you heard the cap pop off it also snaps to post and it's a very nice size very well balanced ergonomically i really like the pen but the section could be just a little smidgen bigger millimeter millimeter and a half more in diameter would be just great but it's usable the way it is and it's light so it's easy to move around and write with in that configuration. You know, it's the classic gold bands in many locations. I mean, really an interesting design in my viewpoint. That stylized W, which we're going to see a lot more as we go through and look at some other pens of the same ear. So this was made in the, in the 1980s, in the latter end of the 1980s. And the Expert line is still around. This is the Expert 1 they made a two where they went back to a more traditional nib. And here's one that they're still selling. Here's an Amazon listing for the current expert. The section just unscrews. We see your cartridge converter there. The pen is made of brass, but it's not very heavy. And just brass with some coating on it, but I think Waterman really did a good job. And this is a, a design which was classic for them at the time. And that clip is very usable, very functional. There's that W, which is also at the top of the clip. And as we go around, we'll see it's identified as Waterman Paris. And you'll notice we're going to look at a couple other identifications that they have on their other pens and talk about what that might mean. And let's I've uh, disassembled the uh, Waterman Expert as much as I'm comfortable doing. I took apart the converter. This metal ring just unscrews from the barrel of the converter. There had some ink that had got past the piston. It's nice that in the piston they have a 
little silicone o-ring there at the bottom in red. It just needed to be cleaned out, reconditioned, and a silicone grease that piston, the threads on the piston rod, assemble it and it'll be back to as good as new. The section is done very nicely, but as you can see, it is just injection molded plastic. Feels like a precious resin. Beautiful two-tone nib, which is a design of a nib I've never seen before. The feed is identified with the size of the nib, extra fine. It's just interesting. And I have written with this pen before I cleaned it out. It was pretty low on ink, so I'm going to re-ink it. Haven't figured out what ink yet. So everything's done very nicely, fit and finish. A lot of heavy gold plating. And as, uh, as we know, it's a push to cap. And it just is very secure. I think we need to take a look inside the cap just to show you how nicely it's finished on the inside. We reduced the lighting a little bit, brought in our LED. You know, that gold labeling on that cap band is also done very nicely. And this is not a young pen. It's been around for many, many years, a couple decades at least. And it doesn't show any signs of wear. If you look inside the cap, We'll see it's nice and cleanly done. What well, you would expect from a little bit of an upscale pen. It looks like there might be um, a Phillips head there at the uh, top of the cap, but I'm not in the mood to take it apart. Everything lines up very nicely. There's no ink in there. So that's it. The next stage is to maybe do some comparisons Put this back together, find an ink, and put a nib to paper. So here are some Watermans from my collection, which I've pulled together to represent what Waterman was doing in the 80s, early 90s. And these all share in common because they're all a metal base with some type of coating, some colorful, some chased, and some just classic black. You may recognize the two Le Mans. This is Le Mans 200 and this is Le Mans 100. This came out in 83. This came out in 85. And both of them were in production until the early 2000s. The 100 was definitely more of a flagship model. And this one, I got it to Fountain Pen Hospital. I traded a rolled gold Eversharp Skyline set for a set of these. I got the ballpoint to match. And as we look at that engraving, we'll see it says Waterman, but as we go around, we'll see it says Made in France. And looking at this pen more closely, I noticed that the Made in France is engraved very subtly in the cap, above that cap band. It's interesting how they decided to do that. Who knows what was the logic behind the different labeling that they put on these pens. The other thing these all share in common is a pull-off cap and they post very securely. These three are snap to post just like when you cap them is also a very nice clicking sound. but some of them get very long. And we'll look at them and compare them posted. This has a very beautiful upscale nib, which is typical of the higher end pens made during this time frame. The feet has fins on it, which is one of the distinguishing factors between the Le Mans 100 and the Le Mans 200. This one also has a pull off, not quite as good. These are fairly impressive two-tone nibs on the Le Mans 100 and Le Mans 200. The 200 is a double broad. The Le Mans 100 is a medium. And you can see the difference in the feeds, finned, not finned. And also hopefully you can appreciate that tipping material. Down at the bottom of the section is the 
place where the cap snaps on. Very nice pens. Two different types of pens from Waterman of this time. And it also snaps to post, but not quite as secure as the 100, which was the higher end pen. And this is the Lariat, a lower end pen. Just one logo there. And if we look at the engraving here on the cap band, we'll just also see it just says France, not made in France. And if we pull out the Le Mans 200, we'll see Waterman's. And then it also says made in France. So that was a distinguishing characteristic, I think, of their higher end pens. Distinguishing that they were made in France and not made someplace else and being sold by a French company located in Paris. And also popular in those days was registering your purchase. Not necessarily for warranty information, but pretty much to allow Waterman and the company to have a list of customers. Maybe send them a discount coupon or a flyer or announce some new products. What I find interesting is you see here, which pen did you receive? And there's the Lariat, which we've shown. There's an expert. And there's Le Mans. Not a 100, 200, just Le Mans. And there's the Phileas. So those were the pens that were around at that time, sold by Waterman. So what were the other big three pen makers doing about this same time? Well, Parker reissued their Big Red. Schaefer reissued their Balance. Waterman kind of stuck to a more modern design. But the other thing that they did was is they started copying the design of the patrician in this style of pen. Here's some examples of it. And here's how it compared to the vintage model. And here's another example of a Waterman pen from that same time frame, the Charleston. I did a review on this. It has that nice stylized W again. And if we look at this cap band, we'll also see it just says France. Interesting how they did that. And what that change might imply is to where that pen may have been made, but sold by a French company. Here's an example of the packaging back then. Very classic. And yes, we buy things on sale. And when you slip this out, you see a nice faux leather box with, again, that same design, ideal Paris Waterman. Clamshell opens it up, and you see a nice presentation. Again, Waterman Ideal is pretty much prominent, and the pen is shown up very nicely in this nice satiny box. And I think all of them also came out with ballpoint versions of their pens. Very nice lacquer job. You know, there's that W logo again, and a similar clip design. Waterman, I think, stayed true to this type of design for a long time, including pens made today. And I like the way this is activated. It's just a push to bring it out, push to bring it back in. Nice design, nice pen. One thing that I acquired when it was on sale many, many years ago. So Waterman did a lot of different packaging back in the days. Something that I bought because it seemed interesting at the time. And it's a Phileas. And it's a set. Nice pen. You got your bottle of black ink. Five different colored cartridges, a converter, and a nice booklet on how to write with a fountain pen. Very well done. And here we see Paris again. Nice two-tone nib on this Phileas, medium. Nicely done and ready to accept a converter or a cartridge. So we talked about the big three and here's maybe the runner-up. But as you'll notice, packaging very similar. Slide out that sleeve. We'll see a nice faux leather box. 
nice embossing there we open it up and gee nice satin lined nice cushion labeling it's a pen cross made very popular as we'll see it says made in USA and it's gold filled very nicely done a small pen but with a very nice nib And as we know, a classic cross converter that they've used on all their pens from this one through to their high-end Townsend. But another classic design that has stayed the test of time. So if you lift up the bed that had the pen on it, you'll see a lot of interesting things underneath. Here's another converter. I bought this pen on sale at Harrods many, many years ago, probably sometime in the 90s. You know, read instructions before using, they certainly do emphasize that. But unlike what we found in the Waterman, this is all one language, all English. Has amazing amount of very good information here concerning using your pen. Do's and don'ts. important things to do cross cartridges cartridges the four nibs that are available how easy to clean and care for your pen I'm just impressed cleaning your pen with a converter goes through that for continued writing pleasure with your fountain pen, really, really good instructions. You know, what happens if things aren't what you expect them to be. More solutions. I'm just impressed. And look, writing feels scratchy. Break in the nib. If not, call for help. Fast, efficient service, and then they list all the service for those of you in various parts of the United States, maybe you'll find a pen shop that's still around or remember one that used to be around. And they go on for a lot of space. So you can imagine what it's like now. And here's your perpetual warranty, cross guarantee. Accessory order form and Something to fill out if you want some more cartridges. Excellent booklet. One of the best I've ever seen with a fountain pen. Well, of course, I'm not going to put just any ink in the Waterman's Expert. I have a number of bottles of vintage ink, so this one called out to me. Tropic Green. I think it's an ink from the 1940s, as much as I can guess. Certainly the bottle has shown its age, and so has the package. Just really uh, interesting done label. No question about what kind of ink is in the label. And these two little flaps broke off. Just that cardboard hasn't survived the test of time. Interesting descriptions and statements of the Waterman ink family. Here's the color card. A little bit of funky stuff going on there. But it is definitely an interesting green, not a color I think I have in any other pen. You can see where it soaked through the color card, where I laid down a glob of it. Chromatography is pretty standard for this type of ink. Yeah, a little bit of light blue, some green, some other blue, and then another strip of green at the top. A lot of different colors in there to create this tropic green look. So now for the editorial part. Overall, I'm very impressed with this pen, design-wise, engineering-wise, form, function. They did a good job with it. You know, pull-off cap is always good, nice, secure. That nib, as I've mentioned, is a little different. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we get into the writing. We'll give you the dimensions. The pen is very comfortable to hold. I like the shape of that section. I like the flare out. There's a step up, but you don't really feel it. It fits well in the hand and the design facilitates a snap to post 
very secure it doesn't change the balance at all so this is a very easy pen to use post it this design didn't last for very long the expert line has continued to this day but I don't think they follow the same type of quality and design that this one was groundbreaking at the time it came out so let's put some of that vintage ink on paper As you probably can hear, this nib has a lot of feedback. Even more than I like. And I did do some tuning, some smoothing. I looked at those tines. When you look at this nib up really close, we'll show you some close-ups. It's like an architect grind. And to show you that, we'll go 90 degrees horizontal, vertical. Go down to 45 degrees, horizontal, vertical. It's actually even more like a Naganati Togi nib, that sailor zoom type nib. So the lower the angle, the wider the line, both horizontal and vertical. I think quite interesting and unique for a nib of this time frame. I'm not certain when Architect nibs first became popular, but this one certainly exhibits those characteristics. So, uh, no rating. This pen uh, stands on its own. You know, it's, it's kind of almost vintage, but not quite. But it certainly, I think, is an interesting pen worth sharing. This video got quite long because I have so much material and I started adding more and more and more. And hopefully you found the whole story interesting and followed through. Appreciate that. Let me know what you thought of the whole video. I want to thank all of you very much for watching. This is a difficult video to do. And I'm going to go back and do editing and who knows how it will turn out. But at least we'll have some interesting content for your entertainment value. Hope this video finds all of you safe, healthy, and happy, enjoying your pens. We've reached the end of this video, and we will say bye until the next one.